You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May. All right. Welcome to another episode of The Practical Wealth Show. So today I have real estate investor Ola Dantes. Let's talk about, so we're in, if you're following my five principles of personal finance, we're in principle five, velocity of money, right? So remember there's four asset classes, business, real estate, paper, and commodities. So Curtis wants you saving money. And we're going to talk about what to do to grow your cash flow and to uh, level up your, your business. And this is what he helps people do. So what I want to, so Ola, let me tell you a little bit about him. So he's a successful real estate entrepreneur focusing on helping others on their journey to financial freedom via passive income. So he's the founder CEO of uh, Dwellin.com, a multifamily syndication firm that has successfully sourced deals of over $40 million by working closely with sellers and with the apartment syndicated with apartment syndicates across the country. The Ola has, has only lived in the United States for a few years. He has successfully completed rehab projects in excess of a million dollars. He continues to exceed investors' returns, uh, building upon his successes on the real estate investing space. Ola likes to post his progress and encourage his community of more than, of more than 45,000 strong on Instagram. And uh, so recently he closed a 160 unit apartment building in Houston, Texas, another 104 unit in, in, in Texas, continues to meet or exceed investors' uh, turns by doing value add deals in strong metropolitan areas. He enjoys working with new investors. So we're gonna talk about that. And both here and abroad, it helped them become successful real estate investors. Finally, his firm uh, has an aim to give back. He's got the One House Pledge, which is an initiative to donate a, a, a house to a family for Christmas, right? Okay. Starting in Baltimore, uh, which is probably a good place to start. And uh, in his recent trip to the Philippines and Bali, all of his visit slums and is now working on a local niche to help people in need. This is his why. See, you know, one of the things that we talk about from Simon Sinek's book is start with why. Why, then how, then what. And so you've got something big. So because money can't be the only thing you're chasing. Okay, you got to have something that's bigger than you that would drive you toward that. Ola, welcome to the Practical Wealth Show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Curtis. I, I wish my wife was here to hear that introduction again. I know me. Listen, I, same thing. It's like, it's hard to be a prophet. It's like, listen, do you know I'm a big deal? Yeah. You just take the trash out, buddy. You know, <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> so, all right. So we're the same. It's like, all right. So I, I, yes. You know, what were you doing before you started doing this? And then what got you into real estate? I like to get to yeah, that. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is such a good question. I think, you know, for folks listening to this podcast, you know, it's sometimes that could be a big gap between, mm -hmm. you know, who they're listening to and, wh and where they're at in their mm -hmm. lives. So I, I want to be like the master, the professor of mm -hmm. kind of making that connection mm -hmm. because I don't want people to feel like, man, this guy's just to, this guy's like all the way up there. I can't even get there. Um, because that's just not true. Um, you know, I did start with nothing, nothing. I've actually just been in the United States for seven years, actually. Wow. Um, the reason I want to emphasize on this is, you know, if you are from this country, which I think is the best country on the planet, I can talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Um, you have all the opportunities and you can do this. Um, so not to be long winded, of course. Um, but I like to give that context so that people don't don't say hey you know i just closed the deal um last month no actually in july um for 11 million dollars in an apartment building just north of austin so i don't want people to feel like i can't do this i, I want to make sure there's that background so in any case um i want to tell you a little bit of my story uh, my wife and i moved to the United States, um, like I said, seven years ago. Shortly thereafter, you know, we got jobs, um, living the American dream, which is, you know, go to work, come home, do it again, go to work, right. traffic on your right. way to work. Is that the American dream? <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought that's what it was, right? right. You know, <laughs> you're taking notes. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so I just felt like, wow, I mean, I, I love America. This is great, but this is kind of monotonous and is this all I'm going to do for the next, you know, 30, 40 years of my life? And then I retire and then what die? Like there's gotta be, you know, something more to life. I mean, don't get me wrong. My wife and I, and ironically at the time we're living in a fancy luxury apartment, paying someone else cash flow. I didn't know that then, obviously, mm -hmm. you don't know what you don't know. Um, 
so as I was kind of wrestling with this thought of I, I want to do something else more than just going to, you know, work and coming back, um, a friend of mine um, called me from, from, from the UK, right, where I used to live mm-hmm. and said, hey, you know, I'm going to be flying to Dubai to meet with some investors and also we can kind of do a mastermind. You can help me with my business. Um, are you able to fly to Dubai and meet me? So obviously I did what every wise man does. I prayed about it and then I asked my wife. <laughs> Can I go? And this was right. way back. Yeah, this is way before the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm, you know, right. Um, like, you know, Zoom wasn't like much of a thing like it is now with the pandemic. So she was like, well, can you guys Skype? Can you, I mean, why do you have to fly, fly all the way there? The reason I'm telling, you know, this story this certain way is because most people think success would come to them in some kind of like golden box with a red ribbon and fireworks right. in the background. Right, right. Like, no, like success could be a call like, hey, do you want to come to this, you know, real estate webinar or do you want to come with me to this conference or whatever? So be, you know, be mindful as you're going through your everyday life to look for those success cues, right? Yeah. Don't think success is going to come or like somebody's going to write you a check for a billion dollars. No, it could be a friend right. that invites you um, to come learn something or it could be a book recommendation, right? right. So I, that's why I'm telling the story this way. In any case, I go to Dubai. Um, I wasn't, you know, in the desert quad biking when, a, you know, pretty standard, I don't know, two, three star hotel um, for like two or three days with my friend just kind of masterminding on his business. Um, you know, not to your surprise, um, this business is, you know, real estate, mm-hmm. <laughs> but he was mm-hmm. actually doing this in the UK. So I thought, wow, I mean, I was looking at his books and I was like, this guy's making a lot of money. Like maybe I could do this thing, you know, in, right. in the U S but I, you know, I knew nothing about it. Pay attention, right? If you're listening to this, you don't have to know anything about anything. Right. right. But what I did do was on my way back, um, you know, I was thinking about this on the plane and I got to the United States and I went to my, my, you know, my best friend, Google. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and I just started like Googling, you know, real estate, what is real estate? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I stumbled upon this website called biggerpockets.com. Mm-hmm. Got plugged into that. Shortly thereafter, I got plugged in into the podcast. I was, I listened from the very first first podcast all the way through and then you know every guest would you know mention a book a certain book rich dad poor dad Mm -hmm. so i went to my second best friend amazon if you want to be successful you have to read you kind of you can't skip that step right Um, if you can see behind of curtis um office here there's a a bunch of books right um so being successful involves reading unfortunately um (laughs) fortunately or unfortunately i love reading so I, i i read a ton of books um anyway so i i i got that book and you know the only way i could describe after reading this book rich dad poor dad was my brain got an uppercut right <laughs> okay. i was like that going to work come home do it again thing that i was thinking about before i went to dubai like that's what the guy was talking about like there's, there's something else you can do right you know you're America, working for yeah. money and the first lesson is rich people don't work for money very first exactly lesson, rich dad poor dad right but what do you mean exactly right <laughs> they get money to work for them right right, right. So, you know, I read this book and obviously I have a, a pretty disciplined character, right? I know that about myself, one of my, my strengths. So I just kind of went to work, right? I bought more books and then, you know, to call the long story short, two, you know, two, three months, you know, after that, I bought my first building, right? Wow, this was three months. Okay. 11, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, this was not $11 million building. This was, you know, a duplex in a, in a pretty class A area. I want to say that in Baltimore, Maryland, you know, not far from John Hopkins, the property of which I still own mm-hmm. um, to today. So, you know, and then we, we moved into that. So we left mm-hmm. <laughs> our fancy apartments in, you know, in, in Columbia, Maryland. That's where we're living at the time to Baltimore, Maryland. So this was from suburbia to, you know, city, right? A I could different never find thing. My best in. friend used yeah. to live in Columbia. So I know exactly what you're talking about. So, you know, <laughs> yes. so you know the difference. Nice right? little, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, I want people to pay attention though. Like, you know, I left this cushy, you know, suburbia, fancy luxury apartment to this duplex that we bought, my wife and I moved into the bottom unit of this duplex. We had tenants on the top, right? But when I go to work and come back, I could never find parking. I had to take the trash out. I had to know what property taxes was, right? Right, right. But that's what you got to do, right? right, but, right, right. And so you, you know, call that house I- hacking, how, how this is how you can get. So once you hear that, because he didn't start out mm-hmm. buying 100 unit apartment buildings, okay? He mm-hmm. started out, he took Nobody action does. within three months of, 
Well, how long did you listen to your podcast? That's just, that's let's have them get into because I always tell we always tell people investing is not about buying something; it's about becoming something, right? And mm-hmm. so you invested in between your two ears mm-hmm. first, right? Mm-hmm. With your two best friends, Google you, you, and Amazon. You, you cannot skip that step. However, yeah, you like, can't you, skip you, that you step. That's why I want you to be yeah, here. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, I I think in terms of timeline, I'll probably say you know listen to podcast maybe six months, right? But I think it's really important to say this you have to know thyself, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like someone like me, I'm just extremely disciplined. I wake up at 4.30, like I did today or 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm not saying you should do that, but I can do that. I try to go to sleep earlier. I meditate. I read every day. Like you have to know yourself. Now, if you think you're not that kind of person and you can't do that, it might take you a year, right? right. If you want, I tell people when they come to me, like, hey, I want to buy an apartment building, which you know, the last one I closed on two months ago was $11 million. What I say to people is to get to that step, it could take you five years, Yeah, up to five years. So realistically, but if you want to buy a duplex in, you know, Philly or, you know, wherever you are in the country, if you're not in New York City and Los Angeles, you might be able to get something for like $300,000. Now for right. that $300,000, you know, we are in the best country on the planet, meaning you can actually get a mortgage for 3.5% down, you know, backed by the federal government. Right, 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 right. FHA loan yes. For, uh-huh. you know, for first homeowners, you know, I don't know anywhere else in the world, you know, that does that. You can't do that anywhere else in the world, right? Here's the other question. So I want to get a little granular right here for a sec. So how many properties would you say you looked at to find that deal? Which one? The very uh, the first, first one. The very first deal. The first one. Not that many, um, I, you know, maybe not even, maybe not even 10 actually. Okay. Um, now on the, but it wasn't side, on the large 10, it was more, it was, it wasn't like, well, I found it and I bought it. You had to look at some. No. Right. right yeah. Right. I had to look at a bunch. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it wasn't a lot though, but I want to make a major contrast, mm-hmm. like on my, on my commercial stuff that I do now, mm-hmm. you know, we look at re- like two, 300 deals before we actually buy one like it's ridiculous like right now in my workspace we have like 1.8 million and 1.8 billion sorry worth of assets that we found and we've only bought two this year mm-hmm. so like it's and that 1.8 billion number is from 2020 you know just from last year to date so mm-hmm. it's a lot of deals that we look at so that's on the commercial side but on the on the residential side i think things are really hot right now in the market but you can still find a duplex depending on where you are in the country yeah yeah so but look it's enough. looking and analyzing so if you look at the buffets and 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 the you know the, the shark tank people and just start they don't buy and hold in dollar cost average but what they're doing is they're and all buffett does is analyze deals all the you know they they're they're they he reads the papers he's looking for now he's buying companies mm-hmm. he did buy berkshire halfway so he could get a foot into real estate so i should tell you something right yeah. there right uh-huh. and uh but it's financial literacy what i want to get out is and this is where you're when we talk about you're going to invest in your mindset your skill set your network rich dad poor dad is a book about accounting that's what the book is about right the ability to read numbers to understanding the difference between an asset and a liability and so when ola is looking at these deals he's looking at the financials he's looking at the area he's looking at right ways that you can create value from that deal for your cat, for your investors. As, as I'm thinking, that, I want you to hear the word it's work, but it's learnable and he teaches it. Okay. And so tell, so from the, you, your house hacking to getting into what was that progression? How many of those did you do? And then when did you start realizing? So what he's doing is something called syndication, right? Correct. T- talk about that timeline. You know, first and foremost, like, you know, you, you can't just go down the street <laughs> and start buying apartments. Right. Like it's, it's a very complicated process. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm on board every single day. Um, you know, I'm on asset management calls and the amount of people on the calls, like the amount of quotes that would go, like, it's just very complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you need a mentor, essentially. That's my message, right? Mm-hmm. Like to, to do just like a brain and neurosurgeon, right? <laughs> like they just don't show up to a hospital and start, you know, cutting, right. you know, heads open. <laughs> like right, they right. go through like, you know, years and years of, you know, medical training and, you know, um, go through school and things like that and get a residency. It's just the same thing. Like you yeah. can't, 
ask people to give you, you know, 50, 100 K of their money, some of which could be someone's life savings to, to invest in an asset. And you, you, you have no idea or you, you haven't learned or you haven't been an, an apprentice. So I, I definitely encourage that's what I did. I, I did a paid mentorship. Um, I, I think it's, it's the, I mean, you just, there's a, there's a variety of reasons why you should do that. Um, but I think a very quick one is when you have money, the brain works very well. It's just very weird. But when you pay for something, you actually want to, you know, if someone like me, because I'm, I try to be altruistic and I want, I wanted to have a free course to just teach people. I, it just, it just didn't really work because right. people, you know, people weren't asking in the game. People, what's the saying? If when you pay, you pay attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good one. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> exactly I want to do like free stuff, low cost stuff. And I've got I've, uh, uh, somebody has, started coach me now i was like nope that's too cheap you know they're not yep. going to do it they're not going to get anything out yep. of it because they didn't put any money into it so it's like all right, exactly all right it's like know. the weirdest thing it's like a mind you got to unpreck to your mind to figure that one out but yeah that, that's just a fact how do you uh coach people so it's, it's two sides do you coach people and then also you provide opportunities for people to invest that they don't want to learn all this stuff and let's say they don't blame them you, you make a lot of money you know, let's say they make, no, they make a lot of money. Let's say they're, they're uh, uh, doing well and they just, they save a lot. They've got, you know, a lot of money in their qualified plans or they're just really good savers and they have the 50 or hundred thousand dollars there. Uh, are the people that deal with you from that standpoint need to be accredited? investors good quite good question so okay. you know not to kind of get into any sec mm-hmm. uh, muddy waters yeah but typically that they, they have to be accredited or sophisticated Sophisticate, okay that, that would give them you know a path to one of our deals as a passive investor they're mm-hmm. not going to be active or sit in the general partner position um so they would just basically ride on the the you know the cash flow on the deal and the mm-hmm. tax benefits right which i think we should really touch on as well you know people think it's all about how much money you make but in america um it's also how much of that money you keep how much you keep um, so you, yeah you, well, let's you talk about that tax, see because everything tax. i always tell people everything wealthy people do is to mitigate current and future taxation and yes. uh one of the things is that uh, and see now let me let's frame this right so this is not, I, I had lunch with, one time I was at a conference, I had lunch with Tom Wheelwright, Tax Free Wealth, tax Kiyosaki's uh, tax accountant, right? Robert mm-hmm. Kiyosaki's tax accountant. And he says, listen, the, 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 the tax program is a stimulus program, right? Mm-hmm. And so the government puts in a series of incentives to get you to do what they want done. And if you'll do what they want done, you won't pay any taxes. So all this, we're going to tax the rich. Y'all don't understand the tax code. Okay. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we say, I'll say, well, look, don't hate the player, hate the game. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cause you need to learn the game. Don't you hate the game. You need to learn how to play the game. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. uh, Ola's been here seven years and he learned the game. Some of y'all been sitting here for 45 and you're completely clueless. All right. So don't get me started with that. The, uh, <laughs> and, but here's the thing. So what does the government need done? They need jobs who provides jobs, entrepreneurs, businesses, right? They need housing. They need food and they need energy. Okay. So in this case, you're providing housing and there's incentives for you to do that. Okay. So now I just want to frame that. Oh, let's talk about that. Cause I want to understand where that comes from. It's not like some loophole. It's just, it's what they need done. You know, where do I start? Like at the end of the day, right. The, the, this, the tax code was created by the IRS um, slash government. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's not like, you know, Jeff Bezos decided to not pay taxes. Right. So I think let's start there or Trump for that matter. Um, you know, but to kind of zone in on, on, on real estate, specifically multifamily apartment buildings, um, there are a couple of ways, right. So the one, easy you know method is depreciation right Mm -hmm. um so if you're part of a syndication you invest a hundred thousand dollars you know in one of our deals um at the end of the 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 year the tax year should we say we will send you something called a k1 Mm -hmm. and a k1 is basically just a statement of how much we've paid you in cash flow you know know, throughout the year Mm -hmm. and then also that would have um, a depreciation but there's also something called um, cost segregation Mm. right it's kind of an accelerated method um, in which we just segregate you know bits of the assets right Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. the property and then depreciate it in a a quicker time frame so even though let's say you invest a hundred thousand dollars and we've paid you 
I just use round numbers. We paid you 20,000 for the year on that 100,000. When you, even though you've received $20,000 into your account, your paper K1 could show a loss of like, you know, $25,000. So now you're minus five grand, you know, in the red from a tax perspective, but you've actually received $20,000 in your account. So that's, you know, one way that you could, um, you know, you could actually leverage the tax benefits. So that way, when you take that K1 and apply that to your other, you know, maybe your other income, or whatever, that's a, yeah. That's so if you offset. got a job, a high W2 job, that loss comes off of your earned income. Exactly. Exactly. So that, that's, that's one way I would do that. And that's not a loophole. That's just how it works. That's what the law says. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's this is hundred percent legal. Yeah. yeah. Just to, yeah. just want to put that in. Because there. think about that. If he gets an apartment building, there are people got to live somewhere, right? The people there, they need people to work. They need to live. Either he's paying taxes, right? You're paying property taxes. There's all a kinds lot of, of it. A lot, a lot of, it. of property taxes. I gotta say that. Right. A lot. A lot, a lot of, property of property taxes. taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, because that local municipality needs him to develop stuff so they have their tax revenue because all government's local like should be a more local than it is right and so there's a lot of stuff generated i was so stupid with the with the with the the people in new york with the whole amazon thing and aoc because you know oh Bezos is not paying taxes yes but i mean that's all of the jobs payroll taxes property taxes from, you know, you're just missing the forest between the trees because between the trees, because you don't understand economics, right? And you have an ideology that's, that's false. Don't get me started with, all right, so we're going to, I'm going to morph into curve my li- a libertarian rant, but you know, it's just, it's, it's just, it's, uh, you're provide you're getting done, you're helping people and you're expanding the economy. So you're doing good work, right? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. money, follows value you create value in the marketplace the, the and money you have to create value to receive money and, no, and you're, you're creating value. yeah and that's that's just how it works what what else am i missing you want to talk about yeah i mean i i just i think what i would like to touch on as well is just um you know for for people to really understand that this exists right? Mm-hmm. This, this method of, of building wealth. And it's not just, um, you know, at the very high um, up, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, the assets that, for example, I'm buying, mm-hmm. um, you can also, you know, in your local area, find a duplex, a triplex, um, you know, a fourplex, which is basically what we consider small multifamily mm-hmm. and, and I'll sack it, right? So I'm speaking to that person that is saying, guys, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't even have, you know, $10,000 to my name right now. Um, you know, so you, you can start there, meaning you can look at smaller properties, um, you know, use the 3.5% um, FHA program, um, you know, to get your first mortgage. Um, and then, you know, kind of scale your way from there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really think that you have to live it. Let's, let's make that point, right? The three and a half percent down is it's, it's a, it's a, cause owner, see what y'all got to understand residential is up to four units, right? So the house hack, you need to live in one and you can do anything. If you're focused on the big picture of creating financial freedom, you can live in your duplex triplex quad for a year, year and a half while you're getting yourself Mm -hmm. together. Right. right. Living rent free, saving money, mm-hmm. you know, and learning how to do the next thing. That's right. That's right. So and I think at the end of the day, look, you know, one of our biggest expenses is, is rent or slash mortgage. Right. So if you can figure that piece out where, where somebody is paying your mortgage, I think that's a good start. Then you can start to, you know, accumulate wealth. Um, and my wife and I, we, we had the same epiphany when we got our first deal. It's like, oh, my goodness, I've never I've never seen so much money in my account just mm-hmm. in a few months of, of owning that two bikes. Mm-hmm. So it's just really starting, you know, starting there. But then if you say, hey, I'm on the, on the other extreme. I'm in my forties or fifties and I can't be, you know, buying a duplex, but I still, I've got some money parked away. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I want to invest, you know, syndication is a, is a good place for you where you can, you know, get really good returns. I can obviously talk about a case study, um, you know, on this deal, we just closed on, you know, something like that. You can come in. Let's, let's talk about that. I want them to understand what's the work, but also the opportunities that exist. If you don't want to learn how to do the work, then, uh, 
Ola does the work. And I want you to hear how, yeah. how good he is. Okay. So talk, talk, <laughs> let's break that down. Break us a deal down for us. Yeah. So, you know, this, this last year, for instance, we, you know, we raised $5 million. So let's say you, you know, you came in and you brought a hundred thousand um, dollars. I don't want to throw too much jargons out, mm-hmm. but essentially the, the, this is the structure, the equity structure is um, you would get something called a 6% preferred rate of return. Um, you know, prefer return shop for preferred return. What mm-hmm. that means is we're going to give you 6% um, on your money first before we, um, the general partners share, you know, in any, any, any profits whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So we are basically aligning interest with our investors, our passive investors and say, Hey, hey we'll give you a preferred return. So after you get that 6%, um, then we do a split, which is, you know, in this case is a 60 to you know the investors and 40 to the partners Mm -hmm. um so on top of the six you know percent that you've received first you also get an additional 60 percent um so that's kind of how that structure works and that that's just really just to um align our interests with our investors and obviously um make sure that they get paid first before we even um, get paid. So that forces us to perform i mean i don't want to use the word forces us but makes us perform right 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 right. Mm -hmm. I don't even mind force. Okay. <laughs> I need you to force to, you to be perform for me. Yes. And, and yes, uh, make exactly. sure I make yeah, money. What we do. Make sure our, yeah, yeah. Our, 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 see, but your, your interests are aligned. It's not somebody just going to take your money and you don't see them again. Exactly. And because um, exactly. there's a lot of regulation going there. So you can't, it's hard to really do that. Well, it's not sustainable to do that, by the way. You know, just put that in there. <laughs> right. You can't, you can't be in business long range and screw people. You know what I mean? You right. can't, exactly. people, the yeah, market, you don't even have to, the SEC doesn't have to do it. The market will find you out. Right. right. You know, and word of mouth gets out there and you won't be able to raise any capital because you, you don't, you know, one of the things is, you know, all I can show you his performer, you know, the deals he's got done and, and investors that he's performed for. And, you know, a, would you say a lot of your uh, uh, money is repeat money? Like people you've already done stuff for, they've gotten their Absolutely. money back out and they're like, yeah. what have you got now? Ola? Let's let's yeah. what's the next thing? Exactly. We are, we're constantly looking for deals. That's, you know, one of my, my focus here. Um, is, is reaching out to brokers. That's how we get most of our deals and mm-hmm. really network. And, Commercial and brokers. Go out there. Correct. Commercial Correct. brokers. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's exciting. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I love that. That's big. I wish I had the bandwidth to learn it because that, that, because <laughs> it's really, you know, it's funny because it's really your, it's a business. Absolutely. You're buying a business. Yes. Yeah. An apartment building is, in, as a matter of fact, I tell people um, buying an apartment is like kind of similar to running a country. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I sound ridiculous, but basically it's the idea you, you buy it for like three to five years. You come in, you do your best. Not everybody's going to like you. Some are going to hate you. Right. And then you pass it on to the next group. And that's really, I mean, you most people drive past these things every day, these big apartments, but that, that's really what they are essentially. Hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're, do you, so you, or do you try to exit in like three to five years and move on to correct. something else? Okay. Correct. Right. Right now we're trying to, you know, CapEx the, this particular asset, which means we're trying to spend um, capital expenditure mm-hmm. to, you know, implement um, our business plan. So we put in a dog park, um, you know, for instance, we put in a, a playground and we do some of the exterior woodwork, you know, things like that. So we will bond, you know, a bit of money probably close to a million dollars just in in in, in capital mm-hmm. to spruce up the the exterior and the interiors you know and, and realize those gains of course in, in rent premiums mm-hmm. but then there's so much you can do in your in your three-year timeline or three to five-year timeline then you gotta um move to the next deal and so what happens is once they do that see it's just different so a lot of y'all are real residential investors you're waiting for appreciation which is the opinion of an the appraisers in that that area. residential area right so tell them the difference what's the difference between that and what you just described what what drives the appre- so basically you could we can just coin a term yeah um, forced appreciation right mm-hmm. so for mm-hmm. these larger assets um this that there, there are specific things that the current owner isn't doing um because he or she is willing or unable to right um so then we can come in and, and do those things and force appreciate that asset because on the commercial space um, what we care about is the NOI which is a net operating income mm-hmm. um, that's how the value of the asset is determined um, including the cap rate don't want to throw too many jargons out mm-hmm. so we have that income so we can basically boost that income 
depending on the activities we, um, you know, we basically carry out during our old term. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, obviously, like you said, on the residential side, you just don't have that um, that luxury. Like, like the, the house is worth what is worth based on, you know, the neighbor's house or, you know, just the house right. down the street. Right. This uh, is judged by the family. cash flow that you're be able to create, right? Correct. And so when we talk about the Rich Dad Poor Dad is, is about accounting. So you've got your t- gross revenue, Minus your expenses, mm-hmm. including the mortgage, you have to service, right? Is that how you do it? And it is your NOI, your net operating income, or no, no. It's the minus the expenses equals your net operating income, and then your debt service comes out of that. Do, it's below just, the line. We, we below, call it below the line. Below the line. Yeah, so below as long you, and so when you're calculating stuff, even with your single families, you've got to say, okay, look, this is what I rent for. This is the, you know, let's say on a single family, it's property taxes, it's all that stuff that comes. And then here is how much debt this will service and you still end up with a profit. And then that kind of determines your offer. See, so you've got to read the numbers. You don't even have to go look at the houses because a lot of times you can tell from the numbers whether or not it's worth your time. And so when they're saying and they're not, you're not looking at a hundred deals, like going to the place, are you? No. No, that would be an absolute waste of time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's that's what I want people to hear. Like there's 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 ways to to speed up this process and be efficient, and then to see. Okay, well that looks good. That looks good. Okay, now we can here we do. Here's a hundred. Now we got about ten that we want to do a deep dive in, and then maybe Correct. we'll make offers on two. Right. That's Correct. the process. There's, there's a method to the madness. Yeah. Yeah, it's a numbers game. So, folks, I don't care what business that you're in, you know, it's it's a you're it's a, a you're in the math business. You only have one. You know, you're in the math business. You're in the arithmetic business of looking at stuff. And so, you have to have the patience. You need to know what you're looking for. What was the goal for you and your wife when you started getting into this? What drove you? What was your why? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have heard this. Um, just kind of like financial freedom, just you know, the freedom to do you know what you want when you want and with whoever you want to. Um, I think that's kind of like the major drive. But was that a passive goal or did that was like uh, got you up in the morning at four o'clock? Like, you know, a lot of people's like, oh, I want to be financially free, but they don't want to do anything like you got to have goals (laughs) that pull you out of the bed in the morning. Yeah, I, I think for, for, for us, it's just really like, how can we contribute, right? You know, yeah. when you get to a place um, in your life where you can do whatever you want, usually comes with um, cash, right? You, yeah. you have to have cash, have to, have and cash to contribute. Right? Um, so, you know, for us, kind of our goal is to use that to, to give back to the community, to help others. That's our why. Um, so, you know, that's... So as that's we finish, really tell them a little about that. I, I wanted to share that because yeah. I, so a lot of you all, we, we, we should be thinking about stuff bigger than ourselves and you know what what things are important to you that you can get behind and so tell me a little about that i i I love that i want you to share that yeah a hundred percent i mean we're yet to serve right we're not just here for ourselves to amass as much wealth Mm -hmm. um as we can just for ourselves i mean if you paying attention um for those that are super wealthy in america they're giving a lot of that money away, you know, as, as they're still alive and after they've gone. So um, that's really not the goal just to amass wealth, but also just to serve. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people that are less fortunate um, in our country and other parts of the world that we want to help um, as little as, as we can. So mm-hmm. I think that, you know, for us, that's a massive uh, motivation for us to really just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. How can they find out about more? What would you like them to do? So to find out more about you, what's the best way to, 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 to reach out, who should be reaching out? If you want to specify a little bit of uh, and how they should reach yeah, out. A- anyone can reach out. If you're a fly on the wall, listening to me and Curtis having a, a chat today and you're like, Hey, I want to reach out. Um, you know, wherever you are, I'm there. Spooky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, I'm everywhere. Um, so just, you know, Google my name or just go on Instagram and just put all Dantes, mm-hmm. um, O L A D A D A N T I S. Or just, if you're watching this on video, you, you can see this right here. Invest with Ola.com. Invest with Ola. Com, so that's ola you know invest with ola.com mm-hmm. you, that would redirect you to our website and or just dm me on instagram there you go so you can get at him <laughs> in a multitude of of, of different ways of places, and uh yeah. or places follow ola listen to what he's got going on you know he mentioned a couple of things we're putting notes you know bigger pockets 
you know, subscribe to my show first, but listen to Bigger Pockets, especially if your asset class of 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 choices is big uh, is real estate. You know, you've got a show too. Don't you have a show? I sure do. Well, yeah. mention that. Yeah, I knew, I knew it was something yeah, else the, I was forgetting. <laughs> no, no, no worries. Like the dwelling show. I mean, um, when you get to the website, or oh, just Google my name, Oladantis Podcast. And, mm-hmm. You know, Curtis um, was on a few weeks ago. So yeah, listen to that. And yeah, and if you have any questions, just reach out to me directly as well. All right. Awesome. Well, guys, hopefully you uh, enjoyed this. He dropped a lot of uh, 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 nuggets on here that you want to hear. I want you to hear his story, the focus, and then he had to learn stuff and then he took action. You know, Tony Robbins calls it personal power, the ability to get yourself to take action, you discipline. And uh, that's what I want you to get out of this. So, Ola, thanks for joining us again on the Practical Wealth Show. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, Curtis. You're welcome. Guys, go out there and make it a great day. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show was copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted